When we think about the future, we need to think about the children. Did you know that the first thousand days of a child's life are critical in shaping the future? With the devastating impact of the coronavirus pandemic and the subsequent lockdowns, thousands of early care practitioners and parents have lost their jobs, which means that thousands of children in vulnerable communities have lost their access to safe educational early care facilities and associated daily nutrition. How can we help? The Early Care Foundation, an organization I've had a long association with, has launched the No One Left Behind campaign for us to help get children back to school. And it's my honor to introduce our first lady and patron of the Early Care Foundation, Dr. Tsepo Motsepe. It is a great pleasure to welcome you, Dr. Motsepe. Very nice to see you. Thank you very much, Gareth. And it's true, you've, been, you've supported us You've gone with us to events in Soweto at the Linda Auditorium, and you've been very, very supportive, mostly in raising funds. In the past, it was when we didn't have the pandemic, when uh, the economy was not challenged like it is, and uh, it's very true. The practitioners who run the early childhood development centers have also been affected. You know, these ladies and men who run their backyard crashes, either in the garage, in their houses, or in a container, have also suffered in their, their businesses because the parents could not afford to bring the children to the crashes. Now, as far as the children are concerned, you did say it already, this is the place where most of the children, 4.5 million children in South Africa, depend on the first, the only nutritional meal that they receive from the crashes. So during the pandemic, because parents couldn't pay, children couldn't go to the crashes, and they were deprived of the stimulation that you've also said. It's so important, you know, that the children... Critical. It's very, very critical. It doesn't just start in, during the first thousand days, as you've also said. It is from inception that the mother is well, so that the cognitive development, you know, the child's brain and development depend a lot on the nutrition that they receive. Apart from that, these early childhood development centers where the children go to are actually mandated by the law. You know, the law says that, uh, the Department of Basic Education says that before children go to grade zero, they have to be exposed to early childhood development. Now, we in the Early Care Foundation, we make sure that the children are in a safe, secure, stimulating environment. Safe as in sometimes the parents under normal circumstances are at work, the child is in a safe They're place. Unsupervised? Of course, unsupervised. The children receive meals, they are stimulated, they are taught. But, but what, I'm, what I'm saying, sorry, is that the, the kids often, if they don't have these facilities, find themselves unsupervised. Both parents might be working. They might even be in, in child-headed households. Yes. We know the social problems we have in yes. this country. Especially in the most disadvantaged communities where we have to make sure that as we rise, we make sure that the whole community rises. I was going to say that, uh, you know, the, the ladies and the practitioners who run these crashes, we in the Early Care Foundation, we make sure that we train them. We have courses that are accredited. We've developed courses that are accredited with a sector education and training sector to make sure that the ladies who look after the children are not just child minders. Right. They do it with knowledge. They are professionals. And we also remind them that apart from being a place of education, they are running a business. And we have to, we try as much as possible to ensure the financial sustainability of uh, the business. Dr. Mutsepe, you, you, you are a medical doctor. Yes, by training, I am. So I you're am. not just speaking about this in, in, a, in a theoretical sense. You, you know what you're talking about. You specialized actually in some maternal care and age care yes, and that kind yes. of thing. So out of all the things that you've spent the many years, you know, before your life did become a little more political, not that you're a political person, but you've spent a lot of time dealing with this 
Why is it so close to your heart? Uh, why is it so close to my heart? Well, I wouldn't know when I did my master's, it was in maternal child health and aging. And I got exposed to studies of children in different communities where there was uh, well, good nutrition within the same society. You know, children who were just divided by road. Those are the real scientific studies that were done where you find that even the diameter of the skull in the child who is well nourished, nourished yeah. from the, during the first thousand days of birth is better developed than right. a child who's malnourished. And making sure that the children receive proper nutrition and, of course, stimulation during the first thousand days of their life, we make, you know, it's possible for them to reach their full potential. It's almost, a, it's almost like a hardware versus a software problem. If those kids don't receive the nutrition and the care and the stimulation at that early age, then it almost makes it harder for them when the education stuff starts to kick in to be able to absorb these things, right? Gareth, so you, you're setting them back. Gareth, you've been to some of our crashes. Yes. And you've seen how well nourished those children are. Yes. How well nourished and how curious they are. You've spent time, even when we've had uh, Nelson Mandela, I think there was one Nelson Mandela day where you yes. came and helped with whatever it was, you know, I making mean, for, sure that the for environment... Some of these, for some of these children, that might be their only good meal that day. Yes. You've seen how well nourished those children are. And you've also seen the facilities that we try and uh, promote, that the children, you know, that the... The, play, the crashes are well resourced. Yes, absolutely. Yes, they've got to have everything that makes it possible for the children to be like the children in other more privileged, more privileged societies. Yes. I'm, I'm always blown away by the difference that it makes to kids if they do get this early on. And I think that it's probably the best chance we have in South Africa of having a generation of people who can really excel and who can compete with the rest of the world. Because if you arrive at school and the first thing for you is to think about how hungry you are, it's very difficult to learn. And, and as for the resources that are provided there in, to, in terms of education and entertaining the children and allowing them to play in a place that's safe, where there aren't dangerous adults on the street. You know, we also know that there are very nasty things that happen to children oh, yes. if they're left alone without adult supervision and particularly without responsible adult supervision. So this is essential. Tell me a little bit about these practitioners because I think they deserve a lot of the credit and you also provide a huge amount of support to them. Yes, the program that we run is really like an incubation program in that uh, apart from exposing them to the, you know, giving them these uh, accredited courses that are accredited with the Sector Education and Training Authority, we also ensure the financial sustainability. You know, most of the training that these ladies, they come, they themselves do not have, are not well qualified. So we've got to make sure that the material that we use, like the textbooks, are in animation, are in animated form. They are drawings right. to make sure that they understand the message. So most of our textbooks are like comic books, and they explain everything that the ladies have to get from the courses. We have uh, trainers. We normally make sure that uh, we have about 20 crashes that are in close proximity, and our trainer goes from one uh, crash to another. Once a week, they go to the facility itself and work with the practitioner to make sure that everything at the crash is uh, all right. And then once a week, all the ladies who, are, who belong to the forum they are normally not more than 20. They go either to a hall or to a place where they get their lectures. And some of the lectures are in acting form. They actually perform some of their lectures to make sure that the message stays with them and they understand it completely. We help them to, we make sure that uh, they comply. You know, the regulations that are based by the Department of Education are very tough. 
They have to comply with six government departments. On their own, they wouldn't. And once they do comply with the departments, then they receive a grant from the Department of Social Development, which is 17 rand per child per day, which amounts to 374 rand a month wow. per child. It's not a huge amount of money. Well, you know, we do not discourage the, the practitioners from also making the parents pay because most of the time the parents pay with the money from the grant. Yes. And they cannot afford, most of the time they can't afford more than 100 rand and, and, and this, is also, this is also where the Early Care Foundation helps because you are raising funds all the time. Yes, we raise funds. For many of these, these creches across the country. We do raise funds continuously. We do raise funds continuously. And as I said, it's for the resources. Yeah. And also to make sure that the business is sustainable. Now, once the children, you know, most of the time when we come to new creches, you find 90 children in a container. The practitioner takes as many children as possible so that they have an income. Sure. But once they comply, where the department says each child has to have a space of 2.2 square meters per child, they can reduce the number of children they take because they know that they will receive a grant yes. from the government and at least it doesn't affect their, their income. Another th good thing is that they become employers and that also has a, an impact on the unemployment problem that we Absolutely. have in our country. So we're, we're solving a number of problems here mm -hmm. all at once. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the Early Care Foundation has done incredible work. It must be quite gratifying to see, even, your, even though I've known you long enough to know that you're not the kind of person who takes uh, personal joy and pride in these things. You like to see that, you're, you know, that good is being done. Well, it, must be, it must be gratifying to know that you've helped so many kids and that the Early Care Foundation has helped so many we kids. We are very lucky that we have very good uh, staff you know, the people who've been involved, who run the program. And I end up getting all the, you know, the admiration. But <laughs> I'm, I'm on the shoulders of other people who do the work. Yes. And they are the people who go to the provinces all over the country. You know, we, are, we have been involved in four uh, provinces. Gauteng, Limpopo, Free State, and the, the Western Cape. Wow. Yes, even the Western Cape. We have a, a committee and we also have a development board. Right. The development board, you know, the, there's the trustees, like every organization has right. to have a board. And then we have a development board, which are, who are people who are like our ambassadors. They come with their special skills. They come, they help us with fundraising. And also with whatever special skills, whether it's legal, it's uh, fundraising, right. it's uh, what is it? Uh, ad, uh, Advisory stuff, all yeah, of that. They come with special skills that help the organization. Do you do you think that the, the pandemic has made it more difficult for the oh, early, early Care Foundation? Has it made it harder for you to access funds, to be able to distribute the funds? You know, some of our funders... Some of the companies that used to give us money annually have not been able to because they themselves were affected by the pandemic. And that, of course, has a trickle effect in that it means that we do not receive the funding that we had budgeted for, and then we have to cut some of the programs. We cannot do whatever we wanted to do. It's not just the economy that has suffered. The owners of the, uh, of the crashes have not being able because the parents were not working. The parents couldn't pay because they were not working. In, that resulted in the children not coming to the crashes. Right. And of course, in that way, then the children are not exposed to the safe, secure, stimulating environment where they get the nutritional. Are we going you know. to be able to catch up? Will we able to be, be able to fill the gap? Well, we do hope. That is why we are asking the public to help us. We are hoping to raise... You know, uh, at least if an individual donated 400 rand a month, right. that would make a, it possible for a child to come back. So to if, attend I, if the I give 400 rand, there's a child that's going to be put through. Definitely. Crash. In a year, if you donated 4,800 rand, that's that would make year. it possible for the child to come to the crash for the whole year. And 
that alone will make such a big difference to this child's life. It's a terrific initiative. I'm sure that there are lots of people who would be willing to do that. We um, hope so. This is the future of our country we're talking about. You are talking like Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is what Nelson Mandela this said. Is, uh, th there's no bigger yes. cause. There's no yes. greater need for us. Yes, that is what Nelson Mandela said. A, a society that looks after its children. Uh, I forgot exactly the quote, but you said it already. Yes, that is exactly what we have to do for our children. I'm, I'm just very impressed with uh, the work that's already been done. I think that this is a great cause that everyone should get behind. I appreciate your time. I know how busy you are. And I know how much you dislike doing interviews. <laughs> uh, I'm very willing to make interviews that are related to the work that we yes. do. But when it comes to personal, I mean, why should I talk about myself? For <laughs> well, you sake? are a mother, so you also I understand am a mother, things yes, from that point of view. I am a view. mother. I'm more a social worker, really, than, yes. a, than a medical doctor. But, you, but you're not the kind of person who likes attention. You're not out there please, trying to get noise. Please, please, please. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm very Thank grateful. You know me well. Uh, well, I'm delighted to know you. From and all I'm, the time that you've been with us. I'm, I'm just that grateful that, uh, that you and the terrific people like Ipeleng and the rest at the Early Care Foundation are doing such a good job. And of course, we also have to thank the people who were, who were there before. You know, when there were only two people who ran the organization. Deidre Caldwell and Richard Ferrer, they were doing everything, the two people, and we're lucky to get Ipileng and the practitioner and the, the trainers. We have a very, very good thing, and I really have to say thank you to them. Well, thank you very much. For the good much. work that they are doing. Thank you, our First Lady. Thank, thank you. you very much, and, uh, you. and well done to the Early Care Foundation. A, a really you, tremendous Deirdre. job and something we all need to know about. If you didn't know about it before now, now you know and support them if you can.